Welcome to the snapshot of Secrets of the Millionaire Mind, Mastering the Inner Game of Wealth by T. Harv Ecker. Here, we'll explore the key insights from Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. Introduction Studies have shown that lottery winners, no matter how much they earn, return in the end to their original financial state. That's because each of us is conditioned for a certain level of wealth. This conditioning, your financial blueprint, was drawn by your parents, teachers, culture, and experiences. It underpins your thoughts, feelings, and actions around money. If you aren't rich, your blueprint is setting you up to fail. Fortunately, you can redraw it. To redraw your blueprint for wealth, use these four strategies. 1. Awareness. Identify your mindset around money. 2. Understanding. Understand how it affects your life. 3. Disassociation. Distance yourself from unhelpful attitudes. And 4. Reconditioning. Replace your unhelpful attitudes with helpful ones. The reconditioning process involves replacing your current mindset with a millionaire's mentality. Your Money Blueprint We live in a physical world that is the result of three other worlds, mental, emotional, and spiritual. A lack in the outer physical world, for example, a lack of money, is only a symptom, a result of a lack in the inner worlds. Making a change in the physical world like getting a new job or even winning the lottery, is like making a correction to a printed page. The next time you print out the document, the typo will still be there. Like a tree that draws nutrients from its roots to create its fruits, the fruits of your labors are generated by your invisible conditioning, your inner mindset about money. Your inner attitudes and beliefs make up your financial blueprint. Many people's financial blueprints prevent them from ever making much money or accumulating wealth. If you were raised in a family where money was tight, You'll think of money by the hundreds, and you'll make money by the hundreds. If you are raised to believe that being rich is bad, you'll subconsciously sabotage yourself. Take Stephen, who made $800,000 a year, but somehow was always broke. He eventually realized that because his mom thought that rich people were pigs, he was subconsciously making sure to get rid of his money as fast as possible. But there's nothing wrong with being rich. Stephen was able to redraw his blueprint to support wealth, and once he bought his mom a condo in Hawaii, she changed her mind too. You can approach redrawing your blueprint in four stages. 1. Awareness. Make a list of the attitudes about money you were surrounded by as a child, the models for spending or saving money, and specific incidents you remember. 2. Understanding. How have these attitudes, models, and incidents shaped your own approach to money? 3. Disassociation. These attitudes do not have to be your attitudes. These models do not have to dictate your approach. These incidents do not have to scar you for life. And four, reconditioning. Set new intentions and act on them. Declarations are a powerful way to shift your inner approach. Speak your intentions out loud every day. An essential part of change is being willing to change, to stop doing things the way you've always done them. Be aware that thoughts create feelings, feelings create actions, and actions create results. The four are inextricably linked, and changing one requires changing at least one other. The Wealth Files When you need to make a decision about money, you access the files in your mind labeled money, which contain all your attitudes, models, and experiences related to money. You decide on the right choice based on the contents of those files. And you can't make successful decisions about money if there's nothing in your money files that supports those decisions. This section explores some of the essential aspects of the millionaire mind. You'll learn to copy those wealth files into your own brain and use them to take specific actions for success. Redrawing your financial blueprint involves changing both what you do and what you don't do, both of which are based on largely subconscious habits. Rich people believe, I create my life. In order to create success for yourself, you must believe that you are in charge of your life. You can't let your chance at wealth depend on a lottery draw, or the economy, or something else outside your control. Poor people have a victim mentality. They blame their situation on other people or on their circumstances. But you can't find success unless you take responsibility for your own life. Poor people justify their situation by downplaying the importance of money. But just like anything else, if you don't think it's important, you won't have it. You also can't find success by complaining. That keeps your focus on the negative situation rather than on the ideal situation, on the obstacles rather than the opportunities. Action. Challenge yourself to go seven days without complaining and see how much brighter the world looks afterward. Rich people think big. 
You have a gift to give, a skill or product that will add value to the lives of others. Why limit yourself and your contribution to the world by thinking small? By opening one store, you can bring a valuable product to a few hundred or a few thousand people. By opening 100 stores, you multiply your value accordingly, both in terms of contribution to the world and in terms of wealth. Action. Write down what you're good at and how you can take advantage of that in your work. Then brainstorm at least three ways you could help ten times as many people with your skills. Rich people associate with positive, successful people. Rich people model themselves off of other rich people, drawing positive energy and inspiration from other success. Negativity is like a sickness. If you spend time with someone infected with it, it will likely spread to you. Connections with positive, successful people will help pave the way for your own success. Action. Read the biography of a millionaire or billionaire. Spend time at a fancy club or in a cafe at a luxury hotel. Avoid pessimists and bad news. Rich people are bigger than their problems. Problems come on a scale from small to large, but that scale is all relative. Rather than focus on the fact that you have a problem or try to avoid the problem, focus on finding a solution to the problem. The more you practice finding solutions, the smaller your problems will seem. You'll always have problems. The trick is not to let them derail you. Action. Write down a problem you're facing and brainstorm 10 actions you can take to resolve the problem. Rich people choose to get paid based on results. A salary is a steady income, but steady doesn't mean good. If you choose to get paid for your time, you will only ever have as much money as you have time. Choosing to get paid for your results comes with a higher risk, but also the chance of larger success. Getting paid for results is the test of your real value. Many people are scared to test their real value, and they will never be rich. Most rich people are business owners. They run the risks, they get the profits. That's how it works. Action. Consider becoming a contractor for your current employer and providing the same service for additional clients. Create a work situation in which you are compensated for your results. Rich people focus on their net worth. You'll never hear a rich person say, so-and-so got a raise. Rich people talk about worth. So-and-so is worth $3 million. Net worth is the sum of value of everything you own. Income is just one of the four pillars of wealth. The other three are savings, investments, and simplification. In our society, the more money you make, the more money you are likely to spend. On a nicer house, a second car, a fancier vacation. So income alone does not guarantee wealth. But once you have savings, you can invest your money and have a second stream of passive income. Income you aren't directly working for. Simplification is the most often overlooked aspect of the equation. If you can minimize your expenses, your wealth will accumulate more quickly. For example, Sue bought a house for $300,000 and sold it seven years later for twice as much. Rather than buying a new house, she moved in with her sister and invested the money. With the income from her investments, she is able to spend half the year in Fiji and only work when she wants to. Action. Focus not on just increasing income, but also on increasing savings, increasing investments, and decreasing expenditures. Create a net worth statement by totaling the worth of everything you own and subtracting from it everything you owe. Update the statement four times a year. Rich people manage their money well. The fundamental difference between being rich and being poor lies in money management. Your ability to manage money, or not, is the result of habits you have developed based on your financial blueprint. Many people think that money management is for people who have a lot of money, but that's not true. If you don't start practicing good money management practices now, with your small amount of money, you will never have a lot of money. Even if it's just a dollar a month to start, manage that one dollar. When you start to focus on choosing what to save and what to spend, you'll find that the intention creates success and acts as a magnet for more success. Confidence in money managing creates confidence in other aspects of life. Action. Create a financial freedom account and put 10% of your income into it every month. Create a play account to spend every month and put 10% of your income into that. Keep a financial freedom jar at home, too, and every day put something into it, even if it's just a penny, to keep your focus on your intentions to be free from financial limitations. Rich people have their money work hard for them. Though it's often said that you have to work hard to earn money, you rarely hear the opposite, that your money should also work hard for you. Rich people learned this. Most people focus on earning active income, going to work and bringing home a paycheck. But if that's all you do, you'll have to work all your life. However, if you invest your money or launch a business that eventually runs without needing your work time, you'll be on your way to financial freedom. Action. 
Learn about investments. Switch your focus from developing active income sources to developing passive income sources. Rich people constantly learn and grow. Thinking that you already know everything you need to know is an attitude guaranteed to keep you from growing yourself or your wealth. Even if you're successful now, the world changes and what you know today is not necessarily what you'll need to know tomorrow. Invest in your own education and growth. If your response is, I can't afford it, you'll always be broke. Action. Do something every month to increase your skills and knowledge and enable personal development. Hire a life coach to push you to achieve your potential. Conclusion. Remember that thoughts create feelings, create actions, create results. Reading these principles is a start, but you won't get very far if you don't put them into action. Redraw your financial blueprint according to the values and priorities that support you in reaching your true financial potential. To redraw your blueprint for wealth, remember these four strategies. 1. Awareness. Identify your mindset around money. 2. Understanding. Understand how it affects your life. 3. Disassociation. Distance yourself from unhelpful attitudes. And finally, 4. Reconditioning. Replace your unhelpful attitudes with helpful ones. Read and reread the wealth files until they become your own mental files. Declare your intentions out loud every day and act on those intentions to bring about the success you're seeking. About T. Harv Ecker T. Harv Ecker is a multimillionaire and president of the financial training company Peak Potentials. With courses such as the Millionaire Mind Intensive, Life Directions, and the Enlightened Warrior Training, he has helped hundreds of thousands of people reach their financial potential. Thank you for listening to the snapshot of Secrets of the Millionaire Mind by T. Harv Ecker. If you liked what you heard, then make sure to explore the rest of our snapshot library to continue gaining key insights from nonfiction books in a matter of minutes. Thank you for listening to our quick learning audiobook review series. If you liked what you heard, then check out our channel for more free audiobook reviews. We post new audiobooks every week. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell to be first to hear of our latest reviews.